Hello friends! Welcome back to our channel. This is your favorite cosplay tita, Yuta Chibana, aka Haruka Sama. Hello, hello, hello! I am a cosplayer based in Japan. I've been doing this since 2009. Yes, I am old. So if you like cosplay stories, tips, how-tos, and everything in between, then please subscribe to our channel! For today's video, I will be talking about the basic tools that you will need to style your own wigs. So if you haven't seen the other videos from my wig series, in part 1, I talked about the basic things that you need to know about cosplay wigs. In part 2, I talked about how to wash and detangle your wigs. Part 3, I talked about how to keep your wig safely on your head securely for cosplay. And now we're gonna talk about some basic tools that you can use for cosplay. So in this video, we will be assuming that you're a newbie and you don't have a lot of budget. And as usual, we have to say our disclaimer, I am not an expert. I am just a cosplayer who has, do who has been doing this for more than a decade. I am not a pro at wig styling, nor am I claiming to be. But I am pretty decent at it, that I can look okay and that I can fix the bangs of my wig to kind of resemble the hairstyle of the characters. So the things or the items that I will be mentioning today, I will be telling you the cheapo version and uh, as well as the things that you can buy if you do decide to invest on more proper tools for wig styling. First off, I suggest that you get a variety of brushes and combs in different sizes. You would need a fine tooth comb and a white tooth comb. I suggest that you get a wide tooth comb that has a handle because it's easier to brush longer wigs when you have something to hold on to. The fine tooth comb you will use for general sectioning and teasing of the wigs. And I suggest that you get a what's called a rat's tail comb. The one with a metal end preferably. Plastic is okay but if you can find one, get one that has a metal pointy end because you can use it by heating it up and then twisting, wrapping some wig fibers onto it. And then you can make tiny little curly <laughs> tendrils. And then when you get some funds or you want to invest in more tools, you can use, uh, you can buy a professional teasing brush because it's easier. It really is easier to <laughs> tease the wig with a teasing comb but a fine tooth comb will be just fine it's just that there are more bristles in a professional teasing comb so it's easier to <laughs> to tease out the wig and back comb it so there and then you can also get a detangling brush and it would be easier to take out the tangles of your wig you would also need lots and I mean lots of clips and clamps in different sizes so that you can partition off and section off the wigs and hold them into place as you work on your wig. Sewing pins, sewing needles. You know the everyday basic sewing pins and needles. So you can use it to section off the wigs, part them and visualize how the spikes and tendrils will look like and hold them into place. And then when you get more funds, you can look up extra long sewing needles and sewing pins. They're a lot longer than the regular sewing needles and pins. And it's easier to style and hold the sections in place with these longer needles and pins. I've seen a lot of hair sty wig stylists, special specifically wig stylists that do drag hair, drag wig, drag wigs use this. Sharp scissors. <laughs> These are pretty self-explanatory. You use them to cut the wig to the length that you want. You don't need to buy professional wig cut, hair cutting shears and scissors just yet because those can be expensive. If you want to keep the sharpness and to keep the scissors in good condition, you have to use them only for one specific purpose. So for example, you want to use these, these scissors for... <laughs> Wig styling. So, put a label on them and never use them for anything else. So, I have a variety of scissors. 
actually i have a lot of scissors one scissor is just for wig styling one scissor is just for cutting fabric and threads i have one scissor for cutting rubber sheet rubber sheet rubber sheet that's the best way that you can keep your scissors sharp and in good condition don't use them for anything else and then if you do decide to level up then go get yourself some nice sharp professional hair cutting scissors and some thinning shears they are they look like regular scissors but one side has like that comb looking thingy so you use it to thin out the wig and it's easier it will make your life easier if you don't have thinning shears you can just cut the wig like this <laughs> little by little and it would thin it out but for me i sometimes like to use straight facial razors because it's easier to sh 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 little by little <laughs> hair dryers or blower some blowers just have on and off but if you can, please get the ones that have a uh, high heat setting. I think what really holds the styling into place is after using product or hairspray on the wig is using a hair dryer to quickly dry up the product and hold it into place. A wig head or a mannequin head. You can actually use anything that is sturdy enough to hold your wig into place. I've seen people who use big cans to hold their wigs. I've seen people who put styrofoam balls on sticks and use that as a wig stand. Long ago when I was a baby cosplayer, I used to style wigs directly on my head. A wig head or a mannequin head is very useful because you can have full use of your hands and you can easily see the back and other angles of the wig that you're working on so there are styrofoam wig heads there are the usual mannequin type wig heads and there are the canvas type wig heads the styrofoam head is very cheap but me personally it didn't last me very long because it eventually had gotten too many holes on it and i had to replace it eventually and I don't really like using plastic or styrofoam because we are earth friendly here. I'm trying to do my best for the earth by reducing my carbon footprint so I never purchased another styrofoam head again. I like to use the mannequin head, the one with the face because it's easier to style the wig when you can visualize a face. You know where the bangs would go, where the ears are, how long you need to cut. Canvas types usually are just the general shape of the head so you don't know how long you need to cut the wig and things like that though i would have to say that you have to be careful with mannequin heads because not all of the time they would be accurate to your head size most of them are smaller than usual so if you do get a mannequin head try to measure your head first and modify the wig head accordingly usually the main looking wig heads are more accurate to human head sizes now I am using the tripod type, but it depends on how frequent you are going to be styling wigs and the ability, the availability of space that you have. So at first I got the clamp type, thinking that it's easier to put away when I'm not using it, but it ended up being unused because I didn't have the proper surface for it. So if you're gonna get a clamp type, of wig stand make sure that you have a desk or a table or any surface that is sturdy enough that you can latch it onto <laughs> and the tripod type is also good because you can get ones that are really tall and you can adjust it accordingly to the length of the wig that you're working on and it's easier because you don't have to crouch when you're <laughs> styling your wig but the drawback is you also need to get yourself some weights so that it doesn't topple over when you do style your wigs. Hair irons. So this is a very ver versatile tool. For the life of me, I cannot use a curling iron. So I use the hair iron to straighten my wigs and detangle and also for curling. So what you can do is you heat up the wig and then if you want to curl it, you just wrap it around a curler or something like a rod or a pipe 
if you can use a curling iron, good for you. I envy you so much. But if you can't, just use a hair iron and get yourself some hair curlers in different sizes so that you can curl your wig. But some hair irons also just have on and off settings. They don't have temperature settings. If you feel like the hair iron is getting too hot and it's burning the wig fibers, just turn it off for a little bit and then turn it on again so that it doesn't get too hot. If you do decide to level up, get those fancy hair irons with the different attachments. The ones that you can use to straighten your hair, curl your hair, and also crimp. <laughs> That's really nice. And then when you do have more, please get yourself some handheld steamer. I got one recently and I love it. Because not only can you use it to heat style your wig, you can also use it to get rid of wrinkles on your costume and use it to clean stuff in your house, stuff toys, curtains. I recently got one for myself and I love it so much! <laughs> but I made the mistake of buying the cheapest one. I didn't check the size. So I got a big ass one and it was kind. it's kind of heavy. So if you can, Get a handheld steamer that is travel friendly so that you can take it with you when you do cosplay and photo shoots. For tying up your wigs, I suggest that you use rubber bands. Not the colored ones, those cheap ones. Use the flesh colored ones, those are usually stronger. If you can, get tiny elastics, those tiny rubber looking garterized thingies. They're a lot more stronger. Drag queen wig stylist use zip ties, cable ties, for tying off wigs because I think they're much stronger. For sticking wig webs and fibers, you can use any old white glue, Elmer's glue or any white glue from the bookstore or hardware is fine. But you can also use hot glue. If you have funds and you really want to stick stuff to the wig, Use Uho Glue. Uho Glue is amazing. It's multi-purpose. You can also use it not only for wig fibers, but to stick um, elements, trims on your costumes. If you want to really secure the fibers onto your wig, you can sew them on. I suggest using clear nylon thread and a curved needle. Plus, if you use a clear nylon thread, you don't have to keep buying thread that is the same color as the wig so it's kind of it's gonna be a all-purpose kind of thread because it's clear so it's not visible even if the color doesn't match this one is not really necessary but i love it because it saves me time especially during cleanup just search for hair cutting cloth or hair cutting cape it, mine looks like this i got it from assist twigs at first, when I saw it, I thought it was stupid and overly priced. But then I decided I have a bit of money to spare, so I decided to get it. You put it on the wig stand, and instead of the fibers going on the floor and making it hard to clean up, it's all in one place, and you can just grab it and throw the wig fibers away. So it's amazing! <laughs> and the most important item of all, hairspray. Again, brands don't really matter, but the best one is the Got To Be Glued Freeze Spray. Those, that one is very expensive and it's too early to invest on it, especially if you're just learning. Because Got To Be is more of a permanent, it's used for more permanent styles. And if you're just learning, you're gonna be making a lot of mistakes. So... <laughs> Sayang lang yung pera, it's just gonna go to waste if you use something expensive and then you're just gonna have to wash the wig because you made a mistake. But any old hairspray, as long as it's the hard type, get that one. Some hairsprays have glitter on them, so be careful if you don't want your wigs to be kira-kira. A crimper is very useful because you can use it to fluff up your wigs. And wigs that have been crimped, they hold styles better. So when you do get funds, get a big crimper. Be careful because when you order online, they might seem all the same. But most cheap crimpers, they're the tiny little things. And if you're So now, let's talk about some basic tips for wig styling. Don't be too conscious about brands just yet. If it works, then it's fine. Just use what you can for now. 
You don't need to buy expensive tools and items because you never know what will happen in the future. You may be into cosplay now, but you know, sometimes life gets in the way. You have to prioritize your studies, your family, and things like that. Only buy expensive items when you're sure that you can get multiple use out of these items. So, a lot ample time in styling your wigs. So, even if you're just cutting bangs or trimming a wig, it's gonna be scary, especially if it's your first time. So, it's better to give yourself more time and then when you finish early, you can just relax. If you're using a tutorial to style your wig, watch, watch that tutorial several times before you tackle your own wig. Most likely, when you style your wig as you watch the, 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 as you watch the, the tutorial, you tend to make more mistakes. So at least familiarize yourself with the steps that you need to make before you do it on your own wig. So I believe in the power of manifesting and visualizing. Burn that tutorial into your head, into your memory before you do it in do it onto your wig. But you know, if you're a newbie, you are going to make a lot of mistakes. Don't worry about it. It's how you learn. Styling wigs can be a bit messy. Sometimes you have to work with sticky hairspray and glue. So it's good to have a damp cloth right beside you. Put that damp cloth in a Tupperware container or in a something in a plate or something that you don't use for eating. As you work on your wig and you get sticky fingers rather than leaving the wig and going wash and going to wash your hands constantly, you can just wipe those sticky residue of your hands on the damp cloth. It's always better to work with a clean base. So wash your wigs before you style them. And you never know, you might like how you style the wig and you never know when you're gonna wash it again. You will most likely, probably, be putting the wig on and off your head several times to check how it looks on your face. So before you start cutting it on the wig head, I suggest that you put it on first and try to, you know, map it out. See how you are going to cut it, plan it on your face first, and check out how it's going to frame your face. Constantly putting it on and putting it back on the wig head and styling it is just a normal part of the process. When cutting your wig, never cut straight horizontally unless you want straight blunt cuts. Always cut vertically like this, slowly, and if you're not sure, do it in sections. Start with the under layer so that even if you make a mistake or you cut it too short, then it's not really obvious and then you can work your way to the top. I mentioned it earlier and this is very cliche, but as with everything, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes help us learn, so don't worry too much about if it's not perfect yet. You will eventually, eventually get better the more that you do it. So just do it, do it slow, do it a little at, ti a little at a time and make those mistakes and get better and learn. Watch a lot of tutorials and wig styling videos and follow wig stylists. Just watch and fill yourself up with knowledge and familiarize yourself with the techniques that you can use for wig styling. So there are some people that I really admire when it comes to wig styling. I suggest that you also watch their videos and learn from them. I love James Manfield. She is a amazing drag queen and wig stylist and I like her voice. She's like, ah! <laughs> And I also like Sebi Berry, He He, Soybean Tofu, Peroksha. There's a lot of wig stylists online that you can follow and get inspired from. Just to add to the point about not rushing, when you rush yourself, you put yourself under pressure. Cosplay wigs are usually made from synthetic fibers. They are not made of real human hair. So don't use oils on them. Don't use organic blah 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 air oil choo choo on them because they're not the same as real human hair. Those will not work. Stick to hairsprays, gels, not so much. They don't really work well on cosplay wigs. So the best products that you can use are 
glue based hairspray hard type hairsprays as well as glues most gels stay away they don't really work on wigs when you're constantly afraid of making mistakes and you have time restrictions or restrictions in general set on yourself you tend to be more nervous and that makes you make more mistakes so don't rush yourself and don't be afraid to make mistakes because that's how people learn and last tip follow me for more cosplay related tips tutorials and videos <laughs> subscribe to our channel all my social media accounts will be in the description box down below if you have any more questions feel free to reach out to me again all of my socials are down there and let's have fun cosplaying you don't have to be perfect you just need to have passion and enjoy what you're doing happy cosplaying to us don't be afraid to reach out to me if you have any more specific cosplay question not just for wig styling thank you so much for watching thank you and goodbye